This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today's Android tablet comparison smackdown is between the Asus ePad Transformer here on the left and the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 on the right. Now the Transformer is no doubt the hottest of Android tablets so far. It has a really cool keyboard dock, it has a great deal of functionality and the price is quite low. It's $399 for the 16 gig with Wi-Fi and $499 for the 32 gig with Wi-Fi. And the Samsung Galaxy Tab is the new kid on the block who's really sexy and good looking. And it's $499 for the 16 gig with Wi-Fi and $599 for the 32 gig with Wi-Fi. So a bit more expensive, but hey, let's see who's really worth the money. First off, the Samsung Galaxy Tab really exudes a different philosophy from the ASUS ePad Transformer. The ASUS wants to be everything, including your notebook replacement if you get the optional $149 keyboard dock that adds two USB 2.0 ports, an SD card slot, and a keyboard and trackpad as well, and an additional battery. This guy here wants to be your iPad 2 competitor. It's slim, sleek, good looking. It weighs only 1.25 pounds and is also exceptionally thin. It's the thinnest Android tablet, it's as thin as the, the iPad 2. And you can see the back is gloss plastic. It's nice looking. It's also available with a metallic silver finish. It's not quite metal kind of shishi like the iPad 2, but doesn't allow it to be quite lightweight. The transformer weighs about 1.5 pounds, so it's a bit heavier. As you can see, it's a little bit longer this way. It's also a bit thicker. We'll show you the side view in a minute. And it has a nice looking kind of bronzy, coppery metal front. Metallic on the sides, and the back is plastic with a stippled finish, and the keyboard matches that. In terms of thickness, you can see. Now the Samsung does bevel and round, makes it look a little, little thinner on the edge, but it is definitely thinner than the Transformer. So first question that we have for you when you're looking for a tablet, are you looking for something that can be a netbook, notebook stand and replacement? Something that does a lot more, say, than the iPad 2 and a lot of other very basic tablets on the market? Or are you looking for something that's just sleek and light and has a gorgeous screen? If you want sleek, light, and gorgeous, it's the Galaxy Tab for you. If you want something that has a whole lot more functionality built in, it's the ASUS ePad Transformer. In terms of display quality here, you can see that they're both very good. The ASUS Transformer was really cool because it had an IPS display. It had a more high quality display than other Android tablets that cost considerably more, like the Motorola Zoom. IPS is the same thing that's used on the iPad too, and it has near 180 degree viewing angles, real sharp, quite bright and nice and colorful as well. Galaxy Tab, Samsung doesn't say what their display technology is. I'm guessing that it may be IPS though because it also has extremely wide viewing angles. They are comparable or close within a degree. Now here, I'd say that Samsung cranked up the color saturation. They can't make Super AMOLED displays this large, but they can try to mimic the effect by increasing color saturation. And certainly one thing we've all come to love Samsung for is their incredibly hyper-realistic super saturated colors on the Super AMOLED display. So you get pretty close brightness, maybe a hair brighter on the Samsung, and you get much more exaggerated colors on it, which a lot of people find it pleasing. However, if you're a graphic designer, photographer type, and prefer realism, you'll probably want to go with the Transformer because it's vivid, it's saturated, it's sharp, and it's also more realistic in the colors that it renders. In terms of performance, they both run on the same NVIDIA Tegra 2 one gigahertz dual core CPU with graphics acceleration. They both have a gig of RAM. They're both available with either 16 or 32 gigs of storage. That's the story for Honeycomb tablets so far. They pretty much they're going to all run on that CPU. Most all of them have a gig of RAM and they have some large amount of internal storage. Where the Samsung falls down a bit is it does not have an expansion card slot. There is no micro SD card slot on the device. Of course, the Transformer has a micro SD card slot and they've provided their own driver because Google still has not, strangely, for Honeycomb. And also, like most Honeycomb tablets, we'll take a look at the ports on this guy right here. This is just your volume and your power controls here, your speaker. But here we've got the dock connector, which is used for charging and all sorts of stuff. And here we have our micro SD card slot. And here we have our mini HDMI port. And we've got a headphone jack. So we've got HDMI out just like on most hand honeycomb tablets. The Motorola Zoom, the uh, Acer Iconia Tab, LG G Slate. Now we take a look at the Galaxy Tab. Beautiful, slim and light. Here's your speaker. 
grill in a similar location. Not many ports going on here. Here's your headphone jack, standard 3.5 millimeter, your volume and your power. Other speaker grill right here. And Samsung's proprietary dock connector down at the bottom. So no HDMI out with this guy here. Which gets into their design philosophy, which it allows them to make a thinner device, most likely. And they're also trying to chase after the iPad 2 here. And that's why we're mentioning the iPad 2 as much as we are in this video review. Not that we're obsessed with it, but because Samsung was clearly chasing after that particular product and their design here. If you want to have HDMI out, you can do that. It's not quite yet, but soon they're going to have an HDMI adapter that's going to plug into this 30-pin port down here, and it'll probably cost about 40 bucks. Likewise, if you want a USB host port, that's a normal USB port to people who don't speak geek speak, there's going to be an adapter as well for $20. Again, that's going to plug into this port on the bottom. It'll give you a single USB port. It'll work with keyboards, mice, flash drives. If Samsung doesn't mention hard drives and there is no USB power out on that adapter so we're not sure if it'll work with that. The ASUS Transformer, it has two USB ports on the dock and we'll show you that right now. Here's the ASUS Transformer keyboard dock. As you see you get your 10-inch chiclet keyboard here, the trackpad. And on the side we have a full-size SD card slot. There's a USB 2.0 port under this door. And on the side, we have a second USB 2.0 port and then the charging dock connector right over here with the little LED to indicate charging status. So for $149 plus $399, so if you get the 16 gig, you're spending $550. bucks. you are still spending around the same as you would for the Galaxy Tab or some other competing high-end Android tablets, and you're getting a lot more functionality. Of course, that depends on whether you want or need that kind of functionality. Another important thing to keep in mind, we mentioned this also in our smackdown between the Galaxy Tab and the Motorola Zoom, is when you don't have a micro SD card slot built in and you've got to buy some accessories to get external USB storage mounted on it, file transfer becomes that much more important. You're going to have to use your USB cable, plug it into your PC or your Mac just to get files on and off these guys. The ASUS is very straightforward, mounts as a mass storage device on Macs. So they will use the Google's free utility for honeycomb tablets that allows it to mount as a mass storage device and transfer works just fine. Of course you can also get things on and off using the SD card or you can use USB ports if you happen to purchase the keyboard. The Samsung, you got your 16 or your 32 gigs of storage and that's that. And it uses Samsung keys unfortunately for file transfer. We mentioned this again in our comparison with the Zoom and Samsung keys is something like MTP, Media Transport Protocol, really meant more for MP3 players and it is a real headache. A beta version just came out for the Mac. It's beta. It, it kind of works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And even on the PC it can be a bit flaky. And it's kind of annoying because with a full-featured tablet like this that can do a lot more than the iDevices, for example, you want to be able to get your documents on and off easily, your, your, your e-books, all of your stuff without having to try to treat it like a media player. Now in terms of performance, both of these guys feel equally as fast when you use them. Uh, the Galaxy Tab, once again, as with the Zoom, benchmarks is a bit slower with Quadrant, about 300 points lower than the ASUS, and also Linpack is a bit higher on the ASUS. But anyway, they can both play 3D games, no problem, that are available for Honeycomb tablets and 1080p video. We're going to test out a 1080p video trailer here on both of these, so you can see. By the way, I give the edge to the speakers on the Samsung. They may be teeny, but they're pretty loud and nice sounding. So it plays equally well both of these. The color saturation being hyped up on the Galaxy Tab is certainly pleasing. But in terms of performance, they're equal. And how about Adobe Flash 10.3 Play Pack? We've got the same X-Men First Class movie trailer going on both of these. You can see it's playing quite well on both of them. We'll bring them both out to 
full screen. Controls work well. So definitely on par in terms of performance with the W Flash 10.3 playback, and they're both very usable and pleasant to use. Again, Samsung wins for their speakers up. Now in terms of custom software, we were hoping to see TouchWiz available because TouchWiz for the tablet is really a nice experience and uh, not as cartoony as it is on the phones. But it's not ready yet. At some point, Samsung says it will be. So what you get when you buy the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 is straight vanilla honeycomb. No added applications other than an office suite. Asus goes the extra mile with software. They have their own ebook reader, and you can watch our full video review of the Transformer to see that in action. I mean, you get a really nice ebook reader right here, my library, and you can sideload books into this as well if they're EPUB books. And there it is, very pretty looking, and yes, it also works in portrait mode. And they've got cloud file sharing, and it comes with basically their own custom version of Splashtop, which is remote desktop control software that works with Macs and Windows as well. So you can actually access your PC using this over Wi-Fi. It's pretty cool, and control your PC, run Netflix from there, for example, which might be something cool to do since you can't run Netflix directly on these tablets. So a couple of nice value-added pieces of software here for the ASUS. We like that quite a bit. In terms of battery life, they're quite comparable. Each of them runs for up to about eight hours on a charge. If you add the transformer dock, that gives you an additional six hours, but just by themselves, you've got about the same battery life on both of them. In terms of cameras, let's take a look on the back here, and you can see that the Samsung has a camera with an LED flash, and that's only a three megapixel camera. We're kind of surprised at that. And in the front you have a 2 megapixel camera for video chat that works with Google Talk video chat. It looks pretty good. This has the same front facing camera, roughly centered as well, also works well for Google video chat. And on the back you've got a 5 megapixel autofocus camera, but no flash. So you lose the help of the flash there, but I can tell you that both photos and video taken, 720p video taken with both of these, that the ASUS wins for quality and also uh, for exposure. The Samsung tends to white out more than does the ASUS. When the ASUS Transform first came out, the camera was a little bit flaky, but there have been some firmware updates and that really addressed that, and we're, we're quite pleased with the camera on this. So that's our SmackDown comparison of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, available now, and the ASUS ePad Transformer. Been available for a while, but was impossible to find, and now you will find it in stock in stores in both 16 and 32 gig capacities, just like the Samsung is. The ASUS is cheaper. The ASUS has more functionality, so for those of you who are looking for a computer stand-in, it's a great choice. The Samsung Galaxy Tab has a stunning screen, it has great speakers, and it's the thinnest and lightest tablet, and it's beautiful. So if you're looking to do nothing more than just use the built-in functionality of the tablet and not use all the accessories without purchasing additional items, adapters, and things like that, then the Samsung Galaxy Tab is a good choice. We think that to compete with the iPad 2, however, that Android tablets need to go further and to offer more features, and that the ASUS is definitely a step in the right direction for that. It does a lot more than the iPad 2 does. It's a lot more expandable, whereas the Galaxy Tab is in some ways out of the box hobbled in some of the same ways that the iPad 2 is. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and visit our website for full reviews of both of these Android tablets.